Hey, Mike here, and today we're talking about uh, investment strategy. So I w do I wanna be the type of person that is an active real estate investor or somebody that's a passive real estate investor? And so I think there's four key considerations for you uh, when making that decision, and it revolves around time, money, expertise, and decision making. And so with that, you need to think about where am I at today in my current role and where do I want to be in the future in consideration of those four areas. So number one, do I have the time to commit to learn all the things that I need to learn to be a successful investor? And so if you do have time, you can mastermind with people, you can read books, you can talk to people, network, and build that growth curve for the future. If you're somebody that you're already busy with your job, you're already busy with life, you have a lot going on, you don't necessarily have a lot of time to commit to yourself. So what you wanna do is you wanna find good people that you can link arms with and lean on their shoulders to make those good, smart, real estate-based decisions for you. The other thing is in the future. If I have a lot of time now, I pour in, I learn the business, I get actively involved uh, later on down the road, you're more likely going to be tied into that business versus maybe having a little bit more freedom where it's kind of set it and forget it. I have other people that I'm working through. So that's a consideration of time. The other three are, are, are linked together in a couple of different ways. So we've got money, expertise, and decision-making power. So in terms of money, you know, we can find an investment that fits no matter how much money you have. And so it's not really about how much money you have. It's about where do you want it to go? Do you want it to go into smaller properties that maybe have a higher risk of vacancy rates? You know, if you have a duplex and one unit's uh, not being rented out not right now, you have a 50% vacancy rate. If you're in an apartment complex that has 20 units and you only have one unit vacant, now you have a 95% vacancy rate. And so there's a little bit more risks involved at different spots. Also, the types of properties, the locations of the properties matter. And so, like I said, it's not so much about how much money, but the diversification, where you're putting that money, how long you want that money tied up. If it's a smaller property, you might have some more decision-making authority over it, depending on your relationship with the person. Otherwise, if you're in a larger syndication with let's say 20 different people and you're a limited partner you don't have that same decision making authority and so um, it depends on what money you're using for those different funds but that's something for you to consider so money how is it being used how much control do I have over that the other thing expertise so this kind of points back to time so do I have the expertise right now to make sound financial decisions based on the real estate that I want to invest in. Um, like I said, if, if you don't have the expertise right now and you have time, you can take that time to get some expertise. If you don't have the expertise right now and you don't have time, then you need to rely on others. And so think about um, how much do I need to know about it um, or do I trust others, the other people that I'm working with, the relationships that I've already built, that they're going to make sound financial decisions. And that's leverage, right? You have the leverage of other people um, being able to say, here's my money. Here's what I want to do with it, and they take it and run with. It. And so, if you work for a large company, you know you don't have to know accounting, human resources, marketing, sales, all that stuff. You're you're kind of doing your role, and it's like that here in real estate investing. You don't have to know everything about everything and get so overwhelmed with the decisions. You can just put your trust in somebody, and that person will help execute on your strategy. And then the final thing is is decision making power. I've kind of touched on that already. Um, if you want to be the person that say, you know, I need to know that we're doing this with the property. Maybe a syndication um, isn't right for you and you want to choose something smaller with less people involved. But if you're like, you know what, I don't need to have that decision making power or I'm using funds like let's say a, a 401k plan where I can't access it anyhow, I don't need to have it back right away. Well, then you might be more inclined to just put your trust in something, let that asset grow over time and not feel like you have to be the authority to make those decisions. So those are four key considerations to make to help you decide whether you want to be active or passive. Um, with that being said, you know, you want to look at diversifying uh, your portfolio. And so if, you know, making double digit returns backed by um, real estate, something that's tangible, something that's saleable and not be influenced by the ups and the downs of the stock market or something like Bitcoin, feel free to reach out to me, ask questions, would be happy to answer any questions that you have. So hope that helps you decide your strategy in the future. Feel free to reach out if you want to know more.